Hi everyone and this is Goff of GoffLawyer.com and in this quick video I'll be looking at the last moments for the 3G network here in Australia which officially closed on the 28th of October 2024. So we start off here first by looking at the Telstra carrier and we can see the Telstra carrier in the lower portion of the band being shut down and the timestamp that you see in the top left hand corner that is local UTC plus 11 time and I am located in the west of Sydney. So it would seem to me that the network probably didn't shut down simultaneously across the country. It was probably a phased configuration change but we can see that it seems like the local BTSs were turning off perhaps one by one and at the time of shutdown, we can kind of see how the signal level just doesn't fall all at once, but it kind of falls in steps, which gives you that um, understanding that it's basically one station turning off, another station turning off, and eventually the kind of signal power in that bandwidth just drops to noise. So we can officially say that this was the time when Telstra... Next G shut down. So what happened with the uh, Next G spectrum that we see there? As it turns out, Telstra didn't waste any time refarming this for other purposes. And so logically we can see that there seems to be an LTE carrier next to it. And that LTE carrier was simply expanded to occupy that space. The expansion itself seems to have been phased over a fairly long period of roughly about a day. And so this segment here is sped up faster than real time to kind of show you how increasing amounts of traffic were starting to occupy a wider bandwidth compared to before. So that means that there is more bandwidth in the um, 850 megahertz band 28 region now. And that's probably great for those who need that long distance propagation or in-building penetration. I know one of my modems certainly struggled around this time and uh, had very inconsistent connectivity until I rebooted it. Maybe the firmware of that particular baseband was just not able to handle a live network configuration change, but these sorts of things don't happen very often. Um, so that's why I thought it would be a great idea to kind of capture it. And so that seems to be the configuration which still persists today as of the uploading of this video. So what happened to the Optus carrier, which is higher up in the 900 megahertz band? As it turns out, it too turned off, but much later than Telstra's carrier did. So Optus was essentially the last standing customer facing network although uh, starting from about the 21st they started to block devices off the network and the 3G network really wasn't accepting any real traffic at that point so while the carrier was still up um, it wasn't that it was actually carrying revenue traffic. So eventually the carrier did come down a lot later than uh, Telstra's but we do have a confirmed date and time for the passing of the Optus 3G network. Uh, of course, these times may be off by about 100 milliseconds. And of course, um, this is just a single vantage point here in the west of Sydney. It seems that this Optus spectrum hasn't actually been reused. And so even monitoring it up to a few days ago, I wasn't able to detect any signal in that particular region. And I don't know whether this is because Optus has enough spectrum anyway that they're just not going to worry about it, or whether there are bigger plans and it will just take some time for that to really kick in. So with that, it seems that 3G is really gone. And so is circuit switch technology, which is... I guess, you know, all, all the better for efficiency, but calls will never sound the same. Anyway, this has been Goff of GoffLouis.com. I've got a very long blog about the passing of 3G. If you'd like to visit it, link in the description. Thanks for watching.